So you simply just go on the side that is away from the small piece of metal still holding that in. Just hit that once. We'll do two of them. All you gotta do is bend those in. Then you take that same pair of hybrids and you just go ahead and break those off with just a few turns. I do prefer these kind of classic clamps. This is a 3 8 It's gonna fit your 14 gauge Romax, your 12 gauge Romax and fit about 95% of the applications us DIYers do. Now with this nut, you can take, this is an old beat up slotted flathead. You can take that and tighten the nut. You'll see guys taking their linesman's and tapping that in to tighten it. If I have access to both sides like this, what I actually do is I'll, I'll hand tighten to where I'm about 45 degrees off of where I want it. And then usually that nut will cinch on and then I can just take my slotted and rotate that into place. So now I have it where I want it. I have access to the two screws I need to tighten to cinch down that clamp. And that's all you need to do. And then alternatively, you might have seen these small plastic, they're called connectors, but it's kind of a bushing, and it does have strain relief as well on the inside. So you actually just press that into place, and it locks it in place, and then this is a 12-3 Romex. You slide that in, and then you have strain relief pulling out. Now, technically, you can just keep pushing in because of the way the tabs work, so this is not my favorite, but it definitely is easier to use. I can see why it'd be a little bit more ideal for DIYers opposed to your more classic metal clamp. This is what I use, this is what I carry all the time on me, but those are your two most common examples. So having the correct cable clamp or connector to secure that Romex is critical when dealing with metal electrical boxes, which can be a little intimidating for DIY homeowners. Now there is another main issue that you might be forgetting when you're dealing with metal boxes on your projects around the house. So check out this video right here and I'll walk you through those two most common mistakes to make sure you're doing it safely and according to code on your next electrical project. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.